we're going to go ahead and open up vCarve Pro Shopbot Edition and create a new file. We will use the job setup menu to set the parameters for the job we are designing. We need to input the size of the material we will be working with. It is really helpful to use a set of calipers to ensure the thickness parameter is as exact as possible. For now, we will just use a quarter inch for this demonstration. The Z0 position must be set either for the material surface or the machine bed, depending on where you plan to zero your Z axis. Next, it's a good idea to check the XY datum position. In each of the Volkswagen eLabs, we have set the front right corner of the ShopBot as the origin, so this selection should be the same most of the time. Go ahead and click OK. This reveals the 2D view and design stage, as well as the standard tool menu on the left. We're going to start by creating a rectangle using the basic drawing tools. You essentially have two options with each tool in the vector creation menu. You can either input all of the requested info, as we'll do here, and have the software place a rectangle with your exact parameters, or you can simply draw a rectangle with your mouse. Here you can see we're going to create a rounded rectangle with 6 by 4 inch dimensions, but we also have the opportunity to just draw whatever rectangle we would like. When you're finished, you can click Apply and Create, or simply close the menu. Now once you have an artifact on the screen, you may want to manipulate it. The selection tool will let you choose an object or select an object, but you'll need to use the transform mode selection tool if you want to move, scale, or rotate your selection. This tool is available in the edit objects menu to the left. The transformation selection tool reveals handles that can be used for scaling, moving, and rotating any vectors that have been selected in your design stage. These handles work like selection handles in most design software. You'll notice that the icon changes depending on the handle you're hovering over. Feel free to play with this until you feel comfortable manipulating any vectors you have selected. Another useful vector creation tool is the text tool. As with other <coughs> vector creation tools, text opens a menu where you can type, set font styles, and define character attributes. Make sure the font you choose is appropriate for the type and size of bit you'll be using when cutting. When you're finished, click apply. Your text will show up on the screen. Then you can close the menu. Once any vector has been created, including text, the transform selection tool can manipulate the design. Now, when trying to control multiple vectors selected at once, it's really helpful to check out the transform objects menu to the left. Here we'll select both vectors, go into the alignment menu, and then center the selections to each other. This will make sure that the name is in the middle of the rounded rectangle. Now when your design is completely finished, move to the Toolpaths menu, hiding on the right side of the screen. As a tip, you can pin it to the window using the push pin button. Your CNC router requires toolpath files to tell it what to do and when. Once your design is finished, as a rule of thumb, select any vectors you want to engrave, and then select the Pocket Toolpath button in the menu. Just like vector creations, you can set several parameters for your toolpath here. It is pretty intuitive, but it is important to set the cut depth of your design. For engraving, this should always be less than the thickness of your material. Then, <coughs> then select the tool or bit you plan to use. It is important to match the tool type with the actual bit you will use. The ONS red numbers can be useful if you're unfamiliar with the types of bits you have available. If you're just getting started, you can ignore the rest of the settings for now. Name the toolpath something recognizable and usually include the word pocket or engrave so you can identify it later. Click Calculate. The software will reveal a 3D rendering of the toolpath it generated. You can preview the toolpath and manipulate the rendering to make sure the final product will look as you expected. When you're done with the 3D rendering, you can zoom in on the 2D view and see the tiny lines 
that will show you exactly the path the tool will take when cutting your design. Now, to set the toolpath to cut out a rectangle, we need to create a profile cut. Select the rounded rectangle vector we created earlier and choose Profile Toolpath in the menu at the right. In the, pro in the Profile Toolpath, set parameters just as before. Select the tool you will use to cut the material. It's nice to not have to change tools between pocket and profile toolpaths, especially, but especially when you're engraving, you will likely have to switch tools depending on your job and materials. Also set the cut depth a bit deeper than the thickness of your material, maybe two hundredths of an inch or more to ensure you get all the way through the, cut, the material when you're cutting. Another useful feature is setting the machine vectors to the desired location. This is particularly helpful when you desire sharp corners or when you know which side of the toolpath is the waste material. This can be very handy when designing to meet exact dimensions. You can choose to cut to the outside of the toolpath, inside, or directly on the toolpath. Just be thoughtful when making that selection. Finally, it is good practice to add tabs to profile toolpaths in order to keep your material secure until the job is finished. The default settings are fine for now, just use the menu to create a few tabs and place them where they will be most useful. This is particularly helpful with flexible materials. <clears throat> the tabs will help hold the material in place until the job is completed. Now just name the toolpath something helpful and click calculate. Now you'll get a warning about cutting through material, but remember we did this on purpose. I do recommend always check here to make sure your max toolpath depth is negligibly larger than the material thickness. So back in the 3D render, you can now preview all toolpaths and check your work one last time. There you can see the tabs that are going to help hold the material in place while it's being cut. Finally, close the menu, and we're just about ready to save our work. Now, it's important to check to make sure that the toolpaths are in the exact order you want, and generally speaking, you want your engraving toolpaths always before your profile cuts. So pocket cuts go before profile cuts. When you're finished, go to the menu, click File and Save. You'll notice this saves as a vCarve file. This will save your design work. So should you decide to be able, should you need to be able to manipulate your design at a later date, this is the easiest way to do that. But to send the file to the shop bot, you have to save the toolpath, then click on the output button so that it outputs all visible toolpaths to the file. You'll notice we see both toolpaths show up there. And again, it's important it does this in order. You want to do your pocket cuts before your profile cuts almost always. Double check everything one last time and click Save Toolpath to File. Create a file name and save it where you can find it. And now our file will be ready to, to open in the ShopBot control box. And we're ready to cut our design.